welcome back to another episode of This and That. On this episode, we'll be looking at the solar project that I did over the last couple months. This part here is setting everything up and getting it all level and even and sighted so we can dig holes for posts. I decided to do a ground mount system, which afforded me a lot of, I don't know, I, I, I just wanted to do ground mount over roof time because I feel like anything on the roof is harder to get to and being on the ground would be easier to maintain and luckily I had the space to do it. So here everything's getting drilled, etc, etc. Some of the technical details of this system, because it is quite large, uh, it is a 22.6 or 22.8 kilowatt system. Uh, a lot of people put like 6, 8, maybe 10. This thing is huge at 20, almost 23. Um, and I did that because, I mean, I have, I use a lot of power, I guess, but I'm also thinking down the road, perhaps I'll be getting an electric car or something like that, and I really don't want to pay for power. So, anyway, moving forward, we are setting posts. This is okay, but none of it's overly difficult, but it's just kind of a tedious process, making sure everything's plumb and square and so on and so forth. And the way I had to set up here is that I had, uh, uh, be south facing and then uh, where I'm at, where I'm at in the hemisphere it, it really calls for 41 degrees of an angle and that's better for a winter uh, because obviously the winter months here in northeast Ohio are pretty terrible as far as sunshine is concerned so that's another reason why I kind of oversized the system because I'm like well if I'm going to do it I'm just going to go kind of big the inverters that I bought were Fronius and I like those a lot you'll see some of that footage later as I kind of wire those up but uh, I like those a lot because they're simplistic and reliable and uh, they've actually been great thus far. Uh, here I am, along with a couple helpers, setting up the uh, array itself. This is one of the, this is the smaller of the two arrays and uh, I used all treated lumber, uh, 2x6s, and, sorry about the fogginess there, all 2x6s and stringers in between. I've got 2x8 ledger boards in the front and then in the back. Uh, and then you to that 41 degree angle, obviously the backs are taller than the, than the fronts. But uh, I, I purposely bought the, the front ones at, at a little taller just so I can cut them off and use them as braces, as you'll see here in a little bit. This is me kind of doing this by myself. So you can't actually do it all on your own. However, it's nice to have two people, especially when it comes to panels, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. Total cost for the system was probably around 30000 uh, but you do get uh, a third back, 30% back from the federal government, and that includes like the lumber, the panels, the inverters, anything that's directly associated with the cost of the system, which is very nice. Uh, so it makes it pretty attractive that way. One of the things I have with my power company unfortunately is they don't actually cut me a check for when I overproduce and they do charge me the distribution charge which I think is kind of crappy meaning so if I put a kilowatt back on their system they charge me a two, two cents per kilowatt right so last month I put a thousand on so it was like well I'm sorry three three cents per so it was 30 bucks for me to give them free energy which I thought was kind of crappy but uh, all in all though it saved me four hundred dollars last month so I'm gonna all right, so here I'm getting ready to put rails up. Uh, oh, and I used wood instead of aluminum because I just felt like wood, I don't know, I like the, the look of it better. I know everybody's going to leave them full, but you don't have to do that. Hey, they're, cost, they're costly, they're harder to, manip to manipulate. Wood's uh, far cheaper, and I think it looks better aesthetically than the aluminum. So I used ledger lock and whatnot in order to make sure everything was tight and firm and all the rails in there. Now we're putting up these panels. These panels are actually 450 watt bifacial panels. So they're rated at 450, but at some point you'll, you may notice that there's not that white paper or whatever on the back of it, because it's clear. So um, it actually catch, uh, catches reflective sunlight, which is very nice. Uh, and there we go, dark there. Use a flashlight, why not? Maybe we gone. And then, uh, okay, so the smaller ones on the left, Bigger rays on the right. Again, 22.8, let's see, 7.6 kilowatt per uh, per inverter. So that was it 21, yeah, 22, 228. So 22.8 is the total rated power. Uh, I've actually hit over 23 though, uh, because of the bifacial. So you, because the bifacial part is not rated. So the back part that that collects sun is not actually rated on the panel. So 
But these are these are really nice panels. Really nice stuff. Yeah, go to mine's coming right there. And then we're gonna get into actually showing how the inverters were wired. So you see here triple triple inverters, which is nice because I can shut one or two down if I don't need as much power production, which is exactly what I'm going to do because of the fact that uh, my power company has been charging me now to put money back on so they can charge something else or power back on so charge something else. But anyhow, I hope this kind of helps. Feel free to click like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to also ask any questions in the comments and I'm uh, pretty good about getting back to this. So thanks for checking this out and hopefully you guys have a great uh, you know, time putting in solar. I know I did. All right, take care.